look, we all know that there's a lot that can go into our appearance. What we do with our hair, what we do with our clothes, what kind of shoes you wear. There's also a lot of things that we can do that we don't even realize we're doing that can damage our appearance. And specifically today I'm talking about our hair. There are a lot of things that most people don't know about that can actually damage your hair. Now, typically I'm the kind of person that I like to stay positive. I would much rather focus on what we should be doing instead of what we shouldn't be doing. But unfortunately, as much as we can say, do this, sometimes it doesn't necessarily occur that on the opposite side, we shouldn't do this. So today I'm going to go over five main things that I was doing wrong and that you might be doing wrong. Growing up, I didn't know what to do with my hair. For a lot of my youth, I just cut it short because I didn't want to deal. It was just too much work, too much effort. I had no idea what I was doing with it, so I just cut it all off. But once I hit high school, I wanted to grow it out. And so I did. But as you can see, it's frizzy, it's kind of dull, it just doesn't look very good. And on the other side, if you look at this picture, this was when I was in college. Here, I thought my hair was curly. I thought it looked so good, but you can see it's still frizzy. What was it that I was doing wrong? Well, there were a lot of things I was doing and that's what led to my hair looking like this. So if you want to know what it was I did wrong and how I got from that to this, stay tuned because I'm going to go over the five main things that I was doing wrong when I was growing my hair out that caused it to look dull and frizzy and unmanageable. And I'm also going to go over what you should do instead. If you haven't seen any of my videos before, my name is Lena. If you like content like this, like and subscribe and stay tuned. Let's go ahead and get started. Number one, this is one that if you've seen my other videos, you've already heard me talk about. And in fact, I'll go ahead and link my video on this very topic up above. What is that? the ingredients in our product. A lot of our shampoos and conditioners actually have ingredients in them that are damaging to our hair. And the two main ones that I'm gonna focus on today are going to be sulfates and silicones. Sulfates are mainly in our shampoos and sulfates are a cleansing agent, but this cleansing agent can be very strong. It will actually strip the moisture out of your hair and stripping that moisture is going to make your hair look dry, it's going to make it look dull, it's going to make it look frizzy, and it's going to make it break easier. It's damaging your hair. When we're talking about conditioner, the main ingredient you want to keep an eye out for are silicones. The majority of silicones are not water soluble, so when you're putting them in your hair, they're not coming out. When used over a long period of time and not properly cleansed out of our hair, it actually coats the strands and it traps in the moisture, but it also locks out further moisture. So if your hair doesn't have enough moisture as it is, it's locking out any more moisture from penetrating it. And as I said before, lack of moisture leads to frizziness, dryness, breakage. So what can we do instead? Our alternatives are look for a sulfate free shampoo. And then when we're looking for conditioners, we want to try to find some silicone free conditioners. And you can always look at my previous videos to find out how to recognize this and how to find these or just for some ideas. And that will go a long way towards making your hair look healthier. Number two, this one, I can already hear you screaming at me if you're in this camp and trust me, I was there too but washing it too often. And by too often, I mean every day. Washing our hair every day actually does a lot of damage to it in two main ways. The first way is that our scalp is producing that oil for a reason. The oil our scalp produces is actually adding moisture to our hair. So when you're washing it out before it has a chance to really repair itself and to add that moisture to your hair, you're drying your hair out. The other thing that happens when you wash your hair every day is that it retains too much moisture. And yes, that is a bad thing. When it is wet, it is at its most fragile. By washing your hair every day, you are adding to the breakage and that breakage is going to make itself apparent in the appearance of your hair. And I know I can hear you screaming at me through the camera, but my hair is super greasy. I have to wash it every day or it looks awful. 
Trust me, I understand. I've been there. I know a lot of people who have been there. But if you can hold it out for a week and just wash it every other day, I promise that you will notice a change. You will notice after a certain amount of time that your hair is not getting as greasy on that second day. And this is what I really suggest. This is how you're going to help repair the damage to your hair is by pushing your wash days out to every three to four days. Now, again, depending on your hair texture, this might change. The straighter your hair is, the more often you have to wash it. So someone with very straight hair is probably going to have to wash it every two to three days. I wash mine every three to four days. And if you have coily hair, you may not have to wash it for a week. That's my biggest tip. Try to hold out. If you can hold out, it will really benefit your hair and you'll see it, I promise. Number three is one that a lot of us have already heard, and that is heat damage. Our hair dryers, our straighteners, our curlers, they all damage your hair. And if you haven't heard this one, if you do turn your water on too hot, it is damaging it. All of these tools, all of this heat is going to draw moisture out of your hair. It's going to just damage it in general. It's going to add to the appearance of that frizz. So we really just want to try to avoid heat if we can. So what are the alternatives? This one is a little more important because a lot of us know we should avoid heat, but how? I mean, back in high school, you can see here, I used to straighten my hair every day, but that did a lot of damage to it. As you could see in the picture at the beginning of this video, it caused it to be frizzy when I didn't wear it straight. So that is something to keep in mind, is this damage that you're doing to your hair. So what are our alternatives? Well, when it comes to your blow dryer, the biggest alternative I would say is turn it onto a lower setting and use a diffuser. Even if you just use it in the same fashion and hover it around your hair, it's really helping to spread out the heat so it's not all concentrated on one area and it's not damaging as much. The other thing you can do is just try using it on cooler settings. As for your curling iron, I would suggest just trying to use some of those heatless options like the Halo or a Rag Method. If you Google it, you can find a lot of options as to how to curl your hair without heat. If you Google it as well, I'm sure there are a lot of options for how you can straighten your hair without heat. And as for the shower, please just try to turn the heat down. Once you get used to it, you won't even notice the difference. Just turn down the heat a little bit. Number four, and I know this is gonna vary depending on the person, but I know this was a big mistake I made, and that is brushing your hair. This does a lot of damage to our hair, especially if you're going in at the roots and just going straight through it. If you're doing that, whenever your brush encounters a knot, it's not separating the knot, it's breaking it. And any breakage that happens in our hair is going to lead to frizz. And the other thing that a brush does, if you have hair like mine that's curly, you're literally brushing out your curls. If you see this picture here, that's what my hair looks like when I have brushed it every day for several days. My hair almost looks straight. Now, if that's the look for you're going for, that's fine, but keep in mind how you go about it. Now, there are two alternatives to this. If you absolutely have to brush your hair, start at the bottom and work your way up. And if you encounter a knot, just pull it apart very gently. There are a lot of brushes out there that are meant to help you with tangles and with knots. These kind of brushes are meant to gently separate the knots in your hair. So if you have straighter hair, you can't really get away with not brushing it per se. So using one of these kind of brushes is really going to help. On the other hand, if you have curly hair like mine, or wavy hair, or coily hair, whether it's short or long, it doesn't really matter. Your best alternative is to finger detangle in the shower while it's wet with conditioner. I know, it's a mouthful. But this is actually really going to help. After you've washed your hair, if you go in with your conditioner and then you just, again, starting at the bottom, gently separating those knots in your hair, it's going to really help with the appearance of your waves or your curls or your coils. 
and it's going to really reduce damage. I will put anything down in the description box that I think will help with this, but I really suggest this because it's really going to help with the appearance of your hair. Number five, and the final thing that you're probably doing that's damaging your hair, and I know I did this. Now, I'm gonna show you two photos up here. The first is what I looked like my freshman year of high school. The second is what I looked like when I graduated. Notice anything? My hair grew really long over the course of four years. How did I do that? I didn't trim it. I maybe got a haircut once or twice in that entire time span. And that is causing so much damage to your hair. If you're not trimming your hair, if you're not keeping up on getting the dead ends off, that actually does damage your hair. If you have split ends at the bottom and you don't trim them off, they work their way up your hair, which is why in the photo that I showed you of myself at graduation, you can see a lot of frizz everywhere, is because those split ends had worked their way up my hair. Those split ends, they're going to release moisture more easily and they're going to break more easily. And that just, that causes a lot of frizz. So we need to keep our hair trimmed. Now I hear you asking, how often do I need to trim my hair? Now, this is kind of a trick question because the answer is, it depends. I know, that's exactly what you wanted to hear from me is it depends, but it really does. It depends on your hair and the health of your hair. If your hair is damaged, if like me, you were doing all of these things, you're going to have to trim your hair more often. And up until the point where your hair is no longer damaged or it grows out, you're probably going to have to continue to do that. So that's probably gonna be every four to six weeks. Once your hair is healthy, you can start to stretch that out. I think I trimmed my hair last in June or July. So it's been five or six months now <laughs> and it still looks okay, it's not damaged. And the reason for this is because my hair is healthy and it's more moisturized, it doesn't split as easily. That being said, there are a few ways you can tell when you need to trim your hair. The first is just by appearance. If you're looking at the tips of your hair and you can see split ends, you probably wanna just go ahead and get a trim. The other way you can tell, and this depends again on the health of your hair, but if you notice an increase in knots. For me, when I detangle my hair in the shower with my conditioner, my fingers glide through very easily. It doesn't take much effort for me to detangle my hair. So if I start to notice an increase in knots, then I know that it is time to get a haircut. I know, it can be really overwhelming hearing all the things that you're doing wrong, but if you incorporate these things slowly into your routine, I promise you it really will improve the appearance of your hair. And if you need a little help, check out the video that I posted last week. This routine that I go over will really help you to incorporate these things into your life and to encourage your hair to become healthy and if you do have any texture to your hair, it will help encourage that texture to form and make itself apparent. If you do want to see more videos specifically on how you might be damaging your hair, let me know in the comments below. Or on the other side of things, if you want a video on how you could repair the damage that you may have already done to your hair, leave a comment below and I will see you next time.